Hello. Today I'm going to be working on an N1502 video recorder. Now this isn't some pile of junk that I've bought on eBay. This is a machine I've been using for years and it normally works very well. But lately I've been having trouble getting it to start. Uh, when I put a tape in it will not um, synchronize up with the picture. Uh, it'll sometimes just shut down. So there's something wrong. I've got a pretty good idea what it is but I may be wrong. So uh, let's have a look, see what's wrong here. So this is my N1502, which also has audio and video connectors at the back. And the problem I've seen is sometimes when you switch it on, it goes into pause. This is pause kind of button here. And the picture is all slipped to one side. And it takes a long time before that will um, straighten out. And then when you hit play, it will very often lose all sync again and very often shut down. So what seems to be happening, I think, is that the drum speed is not correct. Right, let's uh, just see what it does. Well, on this particular monitor, I'm not seeing a picture at all, which is a bit unhelpful. Can you hear? It's making a, a noise. That's the drum servo struggling. Shouldn't be making that noise. That's wrong. Let's see if I just hit play. All over the place. Shuts down. Oh, we saw a moment of picture there. Now the drum servo has gone off. All over the place. It's hunting. And then it shut down. But if I persevere, usually it will actually get there. This monitor is not ideal. It's giving me blue screen a lot. When I was feeding it into time base corrector, you could see some sort of slipped up picture. You hear that drum servo is not happy. Right, so what's the cause? Well, either it's got an electronic fault or some mechanical fault that I don't know about or it could be as simple as the drum motor belt is slipping. Let's uh, take the lid off and just have a look at the drum speed. So this is a big head drum here. Let's uh, watch what happens when we switch it on. Well, we can see it's spinning, but it looks like it's slow. To me, that looks like it's very slow. Okay, let's start with the uh, belt. Changing a drum motor belt on this is uh, a little fiddly, uh, but I've got it off to a fine art, but I know people can struggle with it. So first we uh, open the bottom cover. I should mention the power is switched off on the isolation transformer. Swing this out of the way. This is the belt we're looking at. It doesn't seem particularly slow. Oh, there's a little bit of slack in it. Yeah, there is a little bit. I've just turned it around so you have a better view. So this is the uh, power supply and some of the electronics. And here's our offending belt. Yes, it is a little slack. Now, taking that belt off isn't hard. Fitting a new one is. So removing the old belt usually involves just taking it off the pulley and it falls off the motor pulley. Job done. I think this belt possibly was never the right size for the machine. Now, to replace it, the problem is you have to put a belt across this pulley. And I have shown this in a previous video. It's rather fiddly. But the answer is to slacken off these screws. There's three screws on this bracket here. 
If we um, remove some and slacken some, don't want to take them all off, you'll lose this belt here, which is a capstan uh, belt, which is clearly in good condition here. Right, that should give me the room I need to be able to pull this out enough that I can put my fingers behind this bracket and put a replacement belt on. Hopefully I have a spare belt. I have a packet which I've marked up, N1502 1700 drum belts, and a part number from a supplier who no longer sells them. But uh, I bought these on eBay. Hopefully they're correct size, though they don't seem to be especially high quality. Don't feel great. But it is a difficult size. So it's a little narrower, and I think that's be that's good, because this one I think was too wide. And it's a little bit shorter, which is good, because this one's sloppy. But it doesn't feel like the highest quality material. Too much stretch in it. It just doesn't... You see, that, that puts up a good resistance, and that's a lot more like an elastic band. Uh, not great, is it? We're going to have to fit it and try it, but I need better quality belts than that. It can be a bit frustrating, this job, that sometimes the, battery takes a, the belt takes a shortcut on this uh, motor pulley, and you just have to take it off and start again. That does feel like it's in place. Okay, let's refit the screws. Well, that all feels okay. I'm just underwhelmed by the quality of the belt. Let's see if it works. No, the uh, I can still hear that strange noise. not happy. Okay, it's there. Just the tracking. This tape appears to be in poor condition. Try a better tape. Okay, not sure what's on this tape, but we'll try it. Still hear the drum struggling a little. Uh, looks like we have a head clog now. Oh, that went horribly wrong. Did you see that? Oh dear. Let's switch this off and get the tape out. Another tape, because actually I suspect that I had a bad recording on it anyway. bit slow to settle but uh, there we go that's working well now let's uh, just reassemble this quick final test
Okay, that's definitely working. So uh, what are we to do? That's the quality of the belt I want. It's got a good twang to it, but this one's too wide and a little bit too long. This is the eBay one, so it's a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower, that's all good, but lacks bite and it's thin. I mean, I don't know what the thickness is, but it's certainly a little bit thinner than that. So we need to obtain some higher quality belts from somewhere with this dimension and this quality. So the belts that I'd ordered are marked up as 83mm diameter, 5mm width. So that's the right sort of size. Well, I can't complain anyway. At least they were cheap and gets the machine going. Now look what I've been given. Let's uh, get some bubble wrap off this. I've been given a Philips N1700. It's in lovely, lovely condition. This was uh, donated by Lady Deborah McMillan, who has allowed me to use her name. Uh, I obviously won't power this up until I've had a look and checked at least the belts underneath. Uh, but let's uh, take a look around the machine. Looking at the back, it doesn't have AV outputs. Not yet, but it soon will have, won't it? This has got to be the cleanest N1700 I've ever seen. It is in absolutely glorious condition. Both of the screws are present here. Oh, what a lovely looking machine. Let's take a quick look underneath. So it's very similar to the 1502, but there are some differences. Still powered down at the moment. So the uh, drum motor belt has uh, snapped. That gives you a pretty good idea what the original belt was like. So, oh, that's quite useful actually. I think that's the original belt. The uh, width looks around about the five millimeter area. The thickness is very thick. I'd say that was, well, I can measure it, about one and a half millimeters thick. Okay, uh, let's take a look. So, bear in mind that this belt has probably stretched slightly anyway, so it may not be the original thickness. 1.3, yes, it could well have been 1.5mm thick, which is a far cry from the uh, eBay efforts. I don't think I could even measure the thickness. 0.4mm, we could be generous and call it half a millimetre. So, uh, really not good enough. But I'll have to fit one of those in this because I have nothing else. What else do we have? The capstan belt is still in place, but is very sloppy, so we'll obviously have to replace that too. There'll be a drive belt for the tape counter here, uh, which doesn't seem to be too bad. And there's one other belt here, which I think is for the FG generator for the Capstan, I can't quite remember what that belt does, but there's one more belt to replace there. Let's take a look at the top of the machine. Again, it's in absolutely lovely condition. Tiniest um, layer of dust in there. There's little clippers existing for the uh, servo panel. The uh, pinch roller looks a little shiny. Yes, a bit shiny, but... Um, doesn't seem to be out of condition. If it had been left in play, that would have um, put a dent in it, which would uh, cause a problem. But uh, no, that looks okay. Then the main head drum looks clean and tidy. There's an X in it, which I hope doesn't mean ruined. N1702, it says on it. So that implies to me that these heads have probably been replaced at some point in the machine's life. Let's see if the head tips look intact. From here they look okay. Best way to find out is with a microscope. Hopefully you can see the glisten of the video head there. 
I get a somewhat better image here than you do through the camera but you can see that the head tip is clean and uh, well it's shiny I can see a little contamination on it and I will clean that let's rotate to the other head I'll just clean those heads up a little bit now this is a head cleaner stick not a cotton bud sometimes you can get it so that the head tip just glistens nicely there we go can you see that I think it's glistening it shows that it's intact looking at the um, cassette lid here it still has the original cleaning tool which you clean this post with very important that and I think the other end was used for setting the presets for the tuner and you can kind of tell how much use the machine has had by how much wear there is on this earthing bracket here and that doesn't look too badly worn so it looks like the machine's not had too much use so I before I can run this machine obviously we'll need to tend to those belts but just before we leave it at that for a moment uh, it might be interesting to power it up and see if the clock runs if a clock doesn't run the most likely cause is a regulator IC uh, which you would have seen me replace on a previous video when I was working on another one of these right let's just power it up and see if we get smoke or nothing or flashing clock display here it goes we get a flashing clock display so that's promising these clocks often fail as well so that's looking quite good and it just ran a motor when I powered it down so uh, I'll change the belts um, on my next video you can watch me uh, working on this and see if we can bring it back to life so I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about N1502 and N1700 machines and uh, I will soon work on the 1700 let's see if we can get it going also of course if we do get it going install audio and video output uh, connectors in the meantime do please remember to like share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology bye for now <laughs>